Okay, hi guys. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, depending where you are. Uh, welcome to the FX Street webinar. Uh, I'm Ian Coleman. I'm going to be your host uh, for the next 50 to 60 minutes. Okay, I'm one of the uh, traders and analysts at First of Trading. Uh, we supply banks, uh, a few Swiss hedge funds, uh, and retail uh, traders with analysis and trade recommendations. Okay, this is both on a, a medium term and uh, an intraday basis. Um, we'll see what we try to do uh, for the first uh, Tuesday of every month is both to sort of have a look at the the big picture, okay, the price action that has occurred in the majority of the uh, the FX majors, um, and basically where we where we see the uh, major currency pairs going in the in the weeks and the month ahead. Um, we don't just use price action, okay. We've also got a bespoke uh, system that overlays on top of our chart. So basically, we're all trained analysis uh, analysts. So what we're looking for is is uh, price formations, chart formations, uh, fib levels, cloud support, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're looking at numerous different things. But what we also do is uh, we have our own overlay system, if you like, which we've developed over about four or five years, uh, which we put on top of the chart. So even if we're, say, bullish in cable, which we were this morning, OK, um, we then use our overlay system to try and get us into the trade. Um, but saying that, what I what I like to do is also work with vanilla charts. OK, a lot of people um, put a lot of of different indicators onto uh, onto a chart. And this can basically give you trading paralysis. So you've got, you're looking at price action, you're looking at engulfing candles, you're looking at uh, spikes, doges, uh, you're looking at some trend indicators like moving averages, you're looking at cloud, you're looking at RSI, you're looking at slow statistics, you might look at parabolic czar, and you're looking at so many things to line up that by the time they all line up, the trade's already gone in the other direction. OK, so what I like to do is to basically forecast what I can see. There's a very good book out there and it's trade what you can see. OK, so we use vanilla charts to basically tell us where the price action is um, and also give us an indication of where price action is going to go. OK, whether or not we're in corrective sequences, whether or not we're in impulsive sequences. Now, impulsive sequences are basically mean um, are the sequences go in one direction with very little retracement. So you can see here this first chart we've got up, OK, is the dollar index. And this is what I'd call an impulsive sequence. OK, this move to the upside. This is also impulsive to the downside. This is corrective, OK, even though it moved up, it was very slight. And again, impulsive. So impulsive moves, uh, strong moves, they normally... Uh, have uh, Marabuzo candles inside. Now, a Marabuzo candle is a strong bullish or bearish candle that opens with very small wick and closes with a very small wick. OK, so it open and closes near the high or the low or near the low or the high, OK, depending on, on if it's uh, bullish or bearish. OK, what, we, what will have a tendency to happen in corrective sequences um, is we'll get a lot of mixed Results, and by that I mean we might get two up bars, two down bars, then another, another two up bars, etc. So when we chop around, okay, and that's where the intraday trader, if they're not careful, um, where the scalper uh, has a tendency to get chopped up, okay. So we want to avoid uh, corrective sequences. We want to trade impulsive sequences, okay, but. We also need to know when these impulsive sequences and these corrective sequences are taking place. And if we deem the corrective sequence to be large enough and the PL to be good enough, um, then we can um, we can still trade those th those levels. Um, Raymond's just asking me here. He said, "Why do you combine Elliott Wave with your analysis?" Um, 
Believe it or not, I'm not fanatical about Elliott Wave, uh, but I do like to see um, wave patterns. Um, a lot of the time with Elliott Wave, Wave 4 will overlap Wave 1, which Elliott Wave enthusiast or hardcore Elliott Wave enthusiast, I should say, would then deem that to be an in, improper in count. What I am fanatical about, uh, which for sure all of my followers will realise is, is fib levels. Uh, been in this game a long time, 44. I am now, started when I was 18. Um, and I know from experience that fib levels are, are targeted by traders, not just for entries, but also for targets. You know, to get, it's one thing getting into a trade, but it's another thing knowing the way to get out. And they, and they work. Okay. Um, so I do look to fibs. Um, like I said, not for, particularly fanatical about Elliott Wayne, but when it combines with something else, it just gives you that extra power. Um, and that's what we want. We want a, com- we want a combination of reasons to trade. We want, we want to have enough triggers, but not too many, as I was mentioning earlier, okay, to, to get us in, okay. So, um, the first one we're going to talk about is the dollar index, um, because obviously we're looking at FX majors. Um, majority of FX majors are dollar based in one way or the other. So if we can get the dollar bias right, and it's always the first report that I write in the morning at about half past four. Um, if we can get the dollar bias right, then we've got a good chance of getting the other FX majors correct because it's giving us a bit of a bunt, a bit of a bit of firepower, um, for that day or for that week, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we're just going to, um, I'm just going to open this up a bit because this is a two hour, uh, ch- chart. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to a weekly, uh, dollar index because as I said, this is a medium term analysis. Okay. And at the end of, uh, every month, I like to look at, um, the monthly charts. I don't trade the monthly charts, but it gives me a good bias. Okay. A monthly reversal candle. It's called an AMR, acute monthly reversal candle. Okay. And this shouldn't be ignored. Um, for people that have listened to our webinars before, uh, there was a guy that did a, um, back testing on, on AMRs, just purely AMRs. Okay. And traded in one lot, so 100,000 units in, I think it was four of the majors. And over a seven year period, this, this trading system, if you like, had netted, uh, about 400k. Um, but obviously the stocks would have to be ginormous. Um, but chart patterns, no matter what the time frame, all mean the same thing. Okay, so an engulfing candle in a in a, in a monthly chart is the same as an engulfing candle in a five minute chart. The difference being is the larger the time frame for me, the more uh, relevance it has to the picture. So it, it tells you whether or not we're counter trending, trending. Uh, or, or, or trading with the trend, okay. Um, and my favourite kind of formation, because we're all going about dojis, we're going about morning stars, evening stars, uh, inside soldiers, blah, 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 okay. The favourite for me is an outside engulfing pattern. And that, notice I said outside engulfing pattern, not just an engulfing pattern. An engulfing candle is a candle Whose body takes over the body of the, of the previous candle. An outside engulfing candle. The whole range has to take out the whole range of the, of the, of the previous candle. So just, just highlight here. Let's get this writing tool. I know we've got. Okay. This is a bullish outside engulfing candle. This is a bullish outside engulfing candle. Uh, another bullish outside engulfing candle, a bearish outside engulfing candle. Okay. So obviously you must get the idea of where I'm coming from now. So, and the reason behind that being, um, is basically that the, the trend has still been working in that, that same direction. So here, you know, we've got a bearish outside engulfing candle. The trend was still to the downside and even this candle, the trend was still to the downside because we made a new low. 
But then the sentiment, and that's what we're trading, the sentiment then completely reversed. And the, instead of the bears being in control, which we were at the start of that run, okay, the bulls dominated price action. And then what we can do on a Marabuzo level, especially on a monthly Marabuzo level, uh, Marabuzo or outside candle, so we take the 50% mark. So you want to be taking the 50% mark to give you a good indication of where support and resistance is going to be, okay, in the next month, okay? So the great thing about an outside bar is that the body is normally very strong. So it's like a Marabuzo candle. Okay, a Marabuzo level is the midpoint of the open and the close of the candle. Okay, not the high and the low, the open and the close. So you basically take the open of a candle, you add it on your calculator, if you like, to the close of the candle. You then divide it by two, and that gives you the midpoint of the open and the close. Okay, and that, again, going back to FIB, okay, 61.8 in the golden ratio, but also a very relevant Fibonacci level. Is 50%. So what we're looking at here is again we're looking at 50%, and a lot of the time that level, the Marabuzo level, will act as support or resistance. So here, this is a bullish outside bar. We get price action higher. It then acts as support. Okay. Here, let's look. Price action lower. It then acts as a resistance. Okay. Support acts as support. Okay. You do get breakthrough here. Acts as resistance. Okay. So these Marabuzo levels are very, very good indeed in in a longer time frame. So what we want to be looking for, we want to be looking for outside bars, and then we want to be noting on our medium term charts because we're plotting these charts. Okay, so then we want to put a line across where the Marabuzo level is. Okay, again, you don't want millions of lines all over your all over your charts. He says and he opens it up and it looks like well, it just looks horrendous. It's because I've got the, the short term uh, outlook here. Um, so this move, basically, this whole move down, okay, was an A B C D formation. So A to B, C to D, and basically what you do there is you put your your line marker, if you like, from the high to the low of the first swing. Okay, remember this isn't an outside engulfing candle. So the bias, the monthly bias that the dollar has given us here, is to the downside. There's no there's no reversal, okay? It's the cloud. So again, one of the reasons why we look at the cloud, especially in a longer time frame, okay, monthly, weekly, daily clouds. Don't use it in five minute charts. It's not built for that. Okay. Japanese traders use it as a long term trading tool, not for not for scalping. Um, so the bias is to the downside, we then get a small small pull back up, and then all we do is we just pull the length of that candle over. Okay, down to here. So that gives us that ABCD formation. Okay, so we also, I mean, this is a bit of a history lesson. We're going back to our two, well, probably go back to the daily chart. Okay, this last move down, the waves inside of these ABCD formations are normally three waves. So going back to wave patterns, which Raymond asked, do I look at Elliott wave? No, I don't. Um, as I said, I like to see wave patterns, but what I like are um, A, B, C, D formations, okay? And I like to see how prices is, is reacting inside a wave, okay? So break down the waves, and inside an A, B, C, D formation, I like to see three legs, okay? Because then three legs are corrective, five legs are normally impulsive. So here, again, this last leg down, We've got one, two, three, okay, one, two, three inside the leg, one, two, three up in the leg. And then this last leg actually came down the finishing leg in five waves, okay. And that is the end, as far as I'm concerned, of the uh the move lower in the dog. So ever since uh this low, we've been buying dips to the upside, but where to now, because this is obviously why we're, we're all here, okay, we're all 
anticipating the next market move, not obviously the, the ones that have happened. So this was the five legs. This was actually the fifth leg of a fifth leg of an ABCD formation. Again, um, I'm not going to get too, too inside the legs, if you like. Uh, technically, uh, I do, do you pick your trade including stop loss and, and, and uh, take profit? Yeah. I mean, all of our trades, like we bought cable this morning, uh, it's a 35 pip top stop and we took profit at 160.48. So every, every trade order, uh, that we produce, uh, has, uh, stops and targets, yeah, or stop and targets, I should say. So now I'm basically looking, obviously we've got ECB on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, sorry, um, markets anticipating and sometimes wrongly, because you've got to me- remember that the majority of the time, especially in the FX market, the market overreacts, okay? So euro dollar's been sold off aggressively. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that it's, they're not going to do anything on Thursday because I'm not a fortune teller. Well, I'm, I'm a technical analyst. So what I'm looking for is the charts to give me a bias. OK. Um, years ago, I tried to trade fundamental news. You're either too late or, you, or, or for me, I'd be wrong. I'm getting in the get in the trade after. Um, obviously, after the event, because I can't get in it before because I don't know what they're going to say. Um, I'd then put a stop on. I'd invariably get stopped out, and then it would either go in my direction or go further down. So um, I stopped being a fundamental trader a long, long, long time ago. Um, but it's obviously fundamentals that move the market. So a lot of the time you can preempt to a certain extent what you expect to happen by what the charts are, are telling you. OK, so going back to dollar index, and I will get to finish this uh, this product in a minute, um, is that we've obviously had a strong move up. Um, but we know that price action wave, waves do not just go in one direction. OK, so... Um, just looking at my, because I've got three screens on here, so I'm just looking at my dollar index charts from my other package. So we actually had um, dollar index resistance at 8219. 8219. One second. Sorry, 8091. Okay, and that was our bespoke levels. So we're talking about the fact earlier that we use technical analysis, but we also use our bespoke system that we built for the overlay on the charts. So even though we were buying uh, do- the dollar index or buying the products that involved the dollar higher, uh, we also knew that it was a, a resistance level at 80.91. And you can see there that we also had previous resistance at 80.86. So we thought um, that dollar buying was going to going to stop here. Now, what we look for is a mild correction to then get long again. OK, intraday, we can still put, we can play the dollar lower, which we have done this morning. As I said, we've we've bought, um, we bought we bought cable, but we, we're also aware that this negative bias in the dollar. Can you just bear with me one second? Somebody else thought they'd been burgled then. Um, the negative bias in the dollar we think is going to be short lived. Okay, so we've got, um, like we said, ECB and we've got non farm payroll. So what we're looking for here is a mild correction lower. Okay, so this is the impulse wave. A free wave correction would take us down to around about 80.33 in the index. We've got 58.2. And previous support here, okay, around 8028. So this is our first prime level, okay, for the dollar index to correct lower 
I wouldn't expect it any further. We might get a shot uh, on Friday with a spike down towards this sort of level, 79, 96. You might want to call it 80 the figure. Okay. That would then form a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. So this would then be called a reverse head and shoulders formation, and the bias would be strongly higher. So what we're expecting at the moment, we're expecting choppy price action to continue this week um, up until Thursday, Friday. Okay, And then we're expecting dollar buying. Okay, So it's not going to be for the faint-hearted to run into these uh, large financial releases. Intraday analysis, I would expect to keep on, or intraday trading, I would expect to keep on being extremely choppy. And basically what I'd now be looking for is slight moves higher in euro dollar, maybe even a little bit more of a push higher in, in cable before the next aggressive move lower. Okay, and that's obviously what we're going to talk about because we're looking at medium term stuff. Okay. Um, Ray was just saying, technically, why did you pick cable? Um, okay, well, we'll, we'll look at cable first. Okay. Um, so any, any questions about the dollar index? Okay, it's very important, or as far as I'm concerned, it's the most important thing to do is to have your bias in your head, your bias sorted out for, for the index before you start looking at other of other pairs. We've also got correlations like euro sterling, okay, which we, we which means we'd have a slightly stronger bias in euro than sterling, etc., 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 etc. We can talk about that. So I'm just going to change over uh, to my cable screen to do it on this other screen first. That's going to be independent. Isn't it? Okay. So. Yeah, um, is the dollar index not very dependent on what the euro will do this week? It's a combination of, of different currency pairs, obviously you know that, um, and predominantly the, the euro dollar. Um, but again, saying that if the euro dollar goes nowhere, then there will be uh, a tendency for the other pairs to dominate. So it's um, the best way to explain this. Yes. The dollar index is predominantly based around euro dollar, but if euro dollar sells off aggressively, um, which means dollar buying, they will have a tendency because of arbitrage. They will have a tendency to be dollar buying in other dollar pairs apart from dollar yen. Okay, put keep dollar yen out of the equation, but there'll be there'll be there will be it might not be as aggressive. But there'll still be dollar buying in other pairs, okay, because of the dollar buying basis or bias in euro dollar. Okay, um, when I was broke in, we had, um, excuse me, we had different desks, okay, going back years ago, we had a parish desk and a Spanish desk and all the rest of it, obviously. Then we had a euro desk and, a, and, and, and the different desks, and then we had an arbitrage desk, okay, and the arbitrage desk years ago, doesn't happen now because it's all done by a computer. But years ago, the arbitrage guys used to pick the difference between the different currency pairs, okay? So they would arbitrage. So they might only be looking for two pips, but it might be a discrepancy either, either in, say, euro dollar, sterling dollar, and euro sterling, or a discrepancy in one of the FX major pairs, okay? And that's called arbitrage. So even though like we're saying euro dollar will predominantly push the the dollar index. Um, there will be an arbitrage aspect as, aspect behind dollar buying, which will push the other dollar pairs to a certain extent. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, cable. Okay, one thing for cable. Again, looking at bigger picture. And then we'll get down to um, what Raymond's asked, well, basically, why did we pick cable this morning? Um, here, this is a, and again, we like to look at monthly charts, just very quickly flip it on. Okay, there's a doji candle. There's not, that's euro dollar as a doji candle. Okay, this was the trend of lower 
uh, monthly highs. OK, this is an outside uh, engulfing candle formation. OK, we're just about at the Marabuzo level now. OK, um, this was the trend of lower lower highs. OK, so we know that there was resistance. Screen is still euro. You sure? Is everybody else still seeing the euro? Because I've not had the euro on yet. Sterling dollar. Um, okay, so we've got that trend of witty of um, monthly lows. So losing myself a little bit again. Okay, and then we saw we want to spread the chart out and see what we're doing. Okay, an ABCD formation would have perfectly pitched the pair at this trend. Okay, there's still scope for it to get there, an ABCD formation, but. I think again with the dollar bias, I don't think, I don't think that's going to happen. Plus, and there's always more than one thing to look at. It's what you give dominance to. Okay. We've also got the potential of a channel formation coming in top here. So, um, basically double bottom, the target would be, would be here. So, like I said, there is scope for further buying in. In, uh, in sterling dollar towards this trend of lower highs um, towards 163.40. But again, looking at chart formations, this is actually an evening doji star. Okay, so this gives the pair a slight bearish bias. Um, going back to why we pulled on trade this morning. And there's different factors behind behind this. Okay. This is previous support. Uh, we've tried to break into some very serious cloud support twice and didn't. Okay, so that's two factors. Then if we break it down into another time frame, And this will answer one of your other questions about fibs and wave patterns and blah, blah, blah. Excuse me. OK, we're very close to 261.8% extension level. So exhaustion zone here and here. Cloud support. OK. Um, we've already seen a leg higher. Um, five way pattern lower. So one is impulsive. Three is corrective. Okay. Impulsive. Don't know where to take four. This is why I don't particularly like Elliott Way. Looks like a triangle formation, which sometimes happen in fourth wave. But again, do you really want to be trading Elliott Wave when there's so many different things that happen in different patterns? OK, so we'll just stick to the fibs. It's going to pause around 161.8%. If it does, look for a pullback and then get short. OK, you've got a very good chance of um, having a decent trade. Um, like I said, our, our levels to break here, um, we're actually out. We actually got about 60.40, 60.41. OK, and again, going back to uh, our bespoke system We've, we had uh, resistance at 16060 and that's basically where the hard trade's been this morning so we look to step inside of it we're not looking to outstay our welcome um, if you look to a daily chart i still still giving this pair a, a medium term bearish bias if we look to the daily chart at the moment this price action is really stayed inside this this candle okay so a close below this candle's open and you you could say you've got inside soldiers which show that the strength of the downtrend is a lot stronger than the strength of the correction higher um 
like I said, I mean, I don't particularly like this pair at the moment. I don't, I like the trade that we did this morning. But to try and pick the top, and remember we've still got bias in, um, in the dollar index for it to go slightly lower before it goes higher. So if that bias is correct, then cable can go higher before it goes lower. Okay, because we're reversing that dollar bias, obviously. So there's still scope for a move up here. So you could say, well, a double bottom formation, 162.38 comes into play. So I prefer to stand aside really at the moment, watch price action around where we are. Um, if we push higher, then I'll be filling my boots up here uh, around that 160. There's loads of levels. OK, uh, 163.40, 162.85. So this sort of 60 pip uh, spread uh, to start getting short of short of cable. At the moment, like I said, with an intraday trade, we've, we've, we've cashed our money and now we're sitting watching really uh, to see how it reacts around this 60.50 level or area. Um, if it gets any further up, then I will start to fade a move. And by the, by, what I mean by fade a move is I'll be looking at shorter time frames, probably hours, 15 minutes. When it gets up towards these resistance levels, um, I'm going to be looking for evening star formations. I'm going to be looking for outside bars. They're not engulfing candles, outside bars. Uh, I'll probably be looking for RSI in that time frame to be slightly overbought. Um, and then I'll look to start fading the move lower. OK, and by fading the move lower, I mean I'm not going to pull my, put my full allotment of trade size on at any given point. So I might go half a lot, another half a lot, another half a lot, another half a lot. So I'm either improving my average and building my trade size until I get the turn lower. OK, and obviously if it gets through 164, say, then I know that my analytical, my technical view is uh, is blown and uh, it's broken that monthly triangle formation to the upside and probably going to keep on going, uh, but I doubt it. So that's cable. Any questions about cable? Euro dollar is the beauty, really. And that, again, going back uh, as um, are you analysing dollar index every morning? Yes, every day, every morning and throughout the day. Um, as I'm not sure if it was Raymond, as somebody was saying earlier, you know, the, the euro dollar has a tendency to dominate the dollar index. Yes, um, that is true. And that's why it's great when it lines up. That dollar index, the base of the dollar index, lined up with 61.8% in uh, the euro dollar weekly. Okay, so here, Breaking it down in the weekly chart. Uh, what did we talk about? Well, I talked about the fact that I don't like wave patterns. Okay. But I like fibs. So here, if you want to, you, there's, the trouble with Elliott wave is, is you could pick whatever waves you like as, as being your impulse wave. So here you can say, right, well, this is one. This is two. I'm going to ignore that one. That's not three, four. This is three. This is four. And this is five. And this is the, the move back up. I don't, I don't really care about that. All I know is that this is pretty impulsive, okay? And these waves are one, two, three, okay? One, two, three, engulfing candle, okay, again, one, two, three. What did we get to? 61.8% on the button, 138.32, and we then moved to the downside. So, again, medium-term bias is for lower levels. Again, what do we get here outside engulfing candle? What did we get here? Outside engulfing candle. Uh, what's the opposite of an outside engulfing candle? An inside arame. Okay, an outside engulfing candle shows you a change in investor sentiment for the reasons that we gave earlier. An inside candle, which is completely opposite to an outside candle, obviously, shows investor indecision. Okay, they both can be seen at the tops and bottoms of trends, okay? Um, an inside candle 
basically you, opposite to an outside candle, you need to wait for a breakout of the previous candle to to trigger your your trade. Um, to see if we can see any decent ones here. This is actually an inside arm, we believe it or not, just inside the range of that that candle there. Marabuzo level would have worked quite well. Um, it's not really an inside arm because they should be smaller technically. Um, but anyway, so we're moving up. Talking about time frames, okay, so we look to time frames to break down. We want to break down time frames. Go to the monthly, okay, because it was the start of the month. I'm going to try to get it without, so you don't have to see all of this. Okay, a great candle. Uh, could have done with being red. Um, but it's a very decent rejection, okay. If it closed a bit further down and it was red, we could have turned around and said it was an inverted hammer. Um, and then a break of this level would have given um, an evening star formation, not an evening doji star. Okay, be careful of this level or all levels around here going into this month. This is the Marabuza. Okay, uh, it's a bullish mar Marabuza, so we know that support there. Obviously, if it's a bearish Marabuza, then it, it's resistance. Okay. So there is, if we look back across price action, there's a lot of areas here, okay, here, here, that have used this sort of 133.75 as, um, as a reaction level. Um, breaking it down, so we've got our medium term bias, so medium term bias, after seeing all these corrected three way patterns, okay, our medium term bias, to the downside, but and there's always buts. Okay, uh, we've seen a spike lower there yesterday. Um, um, okay, we've got a fair bit to go down towards the cloud. What else have we got? Okay, this was a previous area of resistance, it now becomes support, and we've got the dollar index. Okay, that's highlighting scope for a move higher. I'd put a channel on. I wouldn't expect it to be aggressively higher. In fact, we've actually, we got long at 134.85 this morning, so it's only 91. I mean, it's not exactly flying up. Um, I think 135.30, if it does move to the upside, it's going to see decent, decent resistance intraday. If it gets anywhere near this level, OK, um, a right shoulder, so left shoulder, it's been the neckline, left shoulder here, right shoulder here. Um, I love selling into it, but you just going to, before Thursday, I think we're just going to range inside here. We're just going to, intraday traders are going to probably get chopped around a fair bit, unless you've got some decent sort of support and resistance levels. And then I think the bias is to the downside. Um, obviously, also look at last week's Marabuzo level. If it if it happens to break here, it's a good level to have a, a stop in place. Okay, so the Marabuzo level not going to be much further than that. Okay, so you're probably going to be looking at I don't know maybe a 60 tick uh, stop for a potential you know a break, and this is the target. Okay, I can actually tell you the exact target. Oops. Okay. This is the prime, obviously inside weekly cloud, the previous low. So, you know, you look to target sort of 131 figure, uh, to the downside. Um, I do look at gold, but I can't give analytical calls on it, basically because my colleague does our gold analysis at the moment, and, um, I don't want to say something different to him. Um, sorry. Um, dollar Swiss. Um, again, this was a perfect ABCD formation. Oh, let's go to the month for that, shall we? Can't be ignored. Corrected patterns. Okay, this was virtually perfect. Again, giving the dollar the best 
to the upside um, two, two weeks ago. Okay, so we take the AB leg and then project that to the BC leg. Okay, and 88, 88 was um, the D projection target. We look at this low from this candle. Okay, the low was 88, 88. Point two. Okay, so it was a bit perfect projection, and we've moved to the upside. So, so where do we see it now? Well, you know, this the moves up is aggressive. Um, we have stopped near a previous high. Again, breaking down into shorter time frames. Oh, there was a wedge pattern as well. Okay, um, what happens with a wedge breakout? I mean, most of the time we see a wedge pattern. Um, obviously, if you've waited for that, then you're going to be behind the game again because it's off a, off a daily chart. But what happens a lot with wedge formations or channel formations or, or what happens a lot is that, okay, is we get a retest of the breakout level. So, we're still long in our medium term. Uh, we bought it way down here. Okay, we've, our first target we've been out of. Uh, we've now got stop change and we're looking to, to what we call is try and get a bleeder. Okay, uh, intraday it could push up to here before moving lower. Uh, but I think this support level around sort of 90, the figure will hold. Um, even if it does break there, I think again, going to be further sort of limited downside with a potential reverse head and shoulders. So again, left shoulder. This has been a neckline if this high stays in place. Okay. A break here, a spike lower towards the right shoulder and then a rally up. So either, either way, it's giving that dollar bias another, um, another leg to the upside. Okay. Um, so can we see pro prolonged, sort of, well, prolonged, in the next two to three days, can we see the dollar selling off? Yes, we can. But uh, we'd we'll be very carefully trying to take shorts along that dollar bias. And when we when we hit the targets, we're not going to let stay our welcome. That uh, sort of brings me on to dollar cat. Um, Dollar CAD is in a channel formation. Okay, obviously if we break it down to weekly, it will look better. Um, what can I say? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, this is actually an impulse wave down. You're fine. And then one, two, three. A uh, 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 correction back up. I don't think we break to the downside. Um, but what we have got here is a pretty decent um, bearish Gartley formation. We sold at, where we sold at, this morning, this morning. we got short 104.50 this morning, uh, again I'll explain why, bias is the Gartley, what's the target formation of the Gartley, well the target formation of the Gartley is between 60 and 60, 61.8 and 50% of the whole uh, formation. So we look for dollar selling. Again, we'll use some retracements over here. Okay, I look for dollar selling towards here, one hundred three seventy four, or towards here, one hundred three twenty eight. So I've got a short term negative view on the dollar, short term. Okay, and then we're expecting a move back up and this channel formation to break to the upside. Okay, and that again reflecting back to the dollar index tells me the scope for the dollar index to move lower next two to three days. Okay, and then some dollar buying is giving me a bias. My bias might be wrong, my analysis might be wrong, but you have to have a bias. Okay. Um, going back to back to basics. This is a Marabuzo. Okay. Uh, the Marabuzo uh, level for the 31st of October was basically 104.53. Uh, the high from 
uh, this candle. So in other words, this candle moved up, we rejected the Marabuzo level. Okay, is the resistance level. So we've got, if we put a, a trend line on, okay, the horizontal trend line, um, we know we've got not just the resistance here, but if we look back, this this held um, for a couple of days last week. So calling a short at the same level this morning, it isn't really rocket science because we have got numerous factors that give us a bearish bias and why we want to get short. OK, um, again, going back to an ABCD formation, because, again, this might just be corrective. In between 50 and 61.8 percent. So even though we've got short of the pair, we're not looking uh, to to outstay our welcome to the downside. Um, your A is an interesting one. Um, so basically, we've got euro dollar possibly correcting higher um, over the over the week, and then. Uh, an aggressive move to the downside. Okay, 135.25 was an extremely important level in Euro Yen. Okay, it wasn't just uh, the top of a wedge formation, okay, the trend of higher low, uh, higher highs. It was also an intraday ABCD formation. Um, if we then break it or broke it down into shorter time frames. OK, we had an impulse move lower from that level. We then corrected up in a choppy wave sequence okay, towards the previous high, but it was in channel formation. OK, and then we've aggressively moved lower. OK, this is the weekly. If we reflect it back onto, onto Euro Yen uh, weekly chart. OK, this, we're basically coming in at the trend of higher lows. So, OK, so that to so the support level and it, this lines up with 161.8 percent. We've actually taken a, a small medium term uh, long trade at this level. OK, because it's 161.8 percent. Now, again, if you're Elliott Wave fanatical, you'll say, well, surely this is wave four. And you'll, you'll start ignoring this 61.8 this percent level. Um, but we're expecting euro dollar to push correct higher. OK, so that's one reason to think euro yen can push higher okay, because we're using correlation. Um, so just taking a small long off this this fib again is quite sound man money management. We're probably going to get three, three, four to one on, uh, on this reward. But again, we're not looking to our states. To our welcome. It's a counter trend move. Um, I'm just going to put my other charts up. We've also got daily cloud support. OK, so it's rejected that. I've got bespoke support at 132.50, so it's rejected that. OK, so I'm building up a view. But looking at this chart, this chart is plain. It's pretty vanilla. Um, and I'm using basic trading tools to, to, to trigger uh, or to give me my bias. OK. To the upside, 133.13 is the first resistance, and then move higher than that. And this again is why I would ignore Elliott Wave to a certain extent. Move higher than that, 133.68 comes in. Now, what does 133.68 do to that count? It invalidates that count. So basically, when it gets to 133.13, I'm going to be looking uh, to taking taking off. Probably more than half my trade because it's a counter trend trade. Uh, I then move stop to entry. I then look to target 133.68. But if I, if I was an Elliott wave enthusiast, if it gets up to 133.68, then the wave count is broken because Elliott wave says one, two, three, four. Fourth wave can't break the low of wave one. Okay. My medium term forecast is still to the downside. So if I'm still in an uptrend, when it comes to Thursday, probably before ECB, I might put a trigger to a stop trigger. OK, so if it moves aggressively lower, I'll get in a short because the risk reward again is going to be great. 
because I'm going to be looking to focus towards 130.50. So consolidation coming into the end of the week, into ECB, into into Bank of England uh, rate decision. I think Bank of England's virtually going to be a, a non-event. Really, I think the key focus really is going to be on uh, on, on Draghi. Um, but then, you know, Friday, even if we have seen Euro buying, uh, possibly on the fact that Draghi, you know, even though we've got weak inflation out of uh, out the Eurozone, Draghi might ignore it. I doubt it because uh, that is one of their remits. But um, if he does, then we could see some, uh, some, some Euro buying and then the non-farm payroll might give us that catalyst for... Um, for Euro selling again, you can't, I can't tell what the figures are going to be. Um, all I'm looking at is at the charts and saying, well, my bias is here. And I probably need that catalyst, which is going to be the figures on Thursday or Friday to, to confirm or, or not, as the case may be, my medium term outlook. Um, 10 to 1, any questions? No, there's not been many in this, this, uh, this webinar. Okay, one thing I will just say, um, if nobody's tried out our service yet, please do. We do a trial, there's a page on FX Street where you can take out a trial for £25 a month. But what I would say, is you're probably better off leaving it a couple of weeks. What's happened is we're redeveloping the whole website. Uh, we we have had individual packages. Uh, we're now pricing everything together, so you won't just get FX majors, FX crosses. You'll get stock indices, commodities, fixed income, medium term, daily, all for the same price. Okay, so the, the price is going to be greatly reduced. And also, we're launching our iOS application. Um, so if you have got an iPhone, an iPad, which the majority of people have these days, can you be able to get the trade calls um, on the move and the analysis on the move? OK, thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks very much for um, for listening. I uh, hope you found it educational. And uh, good luck for, uh, for the rest of the week. OK, thanks very much. And uh, I'll speak to you again next month. OK, bye for now.